This full service pit stop took 16.6 .6 seconds with 72 steps to complete. Just restriking one lug nut takes on average three tenths of a second. Let's take a look at the footage in slow motion. Carrier's getting his equipment set right out of the gate, just like the Jackman's getting his jack ready on the wall as well. That jack itself weighs about 35 pounds, and of course the changers have their guns already in the off position. They're always making sure the button's in the right position. They have nitrogen running through that air hose so that gun itself works when they jump off the wall. One of the biggest things we teach is always to jump on time. So these pick members are all moving as you see in sync off the wall. Each position has the same steps just to get to the right side and that is on the clock. They have to meet these times of getting to their job. For changers, that's getting to their first lug nut. For the jack person, it is getting to the peg of the car. For the fueler, it's getting the probe to the dry brake of the car. Tire carriers are having to get these two tires, as you see here in the clip, out to the right side while jumping in between the jack person and the changer, getting those tires that weigh over 90 pounds each, setting them out on the right side and having to get to that right rear of the car and then putting that tire on the car. One thing we always talk to our pit crews about is don't try to speed something else up for something you've already done wrong. Make sure you maintain your pace throughout the whole course of the pit stop. Forget what you just did bad, pick up from there and repeat that process. It still will be a slower stop, but it won't turn into quicksand. So here we're showing a good example of choreograph. You're always trying to chase that choreograph to make it cleaner. There's always a 1% that we can make better and better for each stop. That front changer's always taking five steps to get to his first lug nut. The Jackman's taking five steps to clear the nose of the car to be squared up on the right side to hit his peg. The rear changer's taking his same three steps to get around the car, drop in to get his socket into that hub. They're getting square to the car, which is something you always want to be. That means your hips are facing your target. That allows your torso, everything else to be facing your target. Changers, that's crucial because it's a precision-based element trying to hit these lug nuts off five for five on all their patterns. Jackman had to put this plate that's about five inches wide on a peg that's about an inch wide and make sure that thing's always center mass when it's coming in. That jack plate starts to get low, 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 getting that whole body of the jack getting down. So they can go ahead and start placing that plate before the car itself stops. That's a 3,500 pound car that we're getting up with a single stroke. Here on the right side, the tire exchanges are really good. They basically hit that fifth lug nut off, pull tire, get tire on, hit the first lug nut on, is about two seconds. And that's called the exchange. That is a big chunk of both sides of the pit stop. These changers only get two tenths or under on the front to get to their first lug. And the rear changers only getting about seven tenths of a second to get to their first lug. So this is a great view of the front changer. He's popping each lug nut efficiently. That socket's hitting the lug square, getting them off on the first strike does a really excellent job. As soon as you clear that fifth lug nut, we gotta go ahead and start flipping the gun so we can get both hands into the wheel. The left hand is still holding the gun, as you'll see in this angle, so you don't have a full grip like you do on your right hand. But we teach to get those top two fingers, that index and that middle finger hooked on the spoke closest to seven or eight o'clock, and that right hand closest to two or three o'clock. So we got a nice symmetrical lever coming off the hub. Good pulls here, changers again, really saving time on button switches. Those button switches can take anywhere from two tenths to a second if they miss it. And so if you can shave eight tenths on a bad button switch on both sides of the car, that's another 1.6 seconds in the pit stop that they're gonna save just off of using their equipment more functionally. So that's those pieces of the pit stop we're always looking at so we can grade them out once they get back from the racetrack. If you watch that tire carrier in the rear, you watch the jet person in the front starting to put those tires on. You'll see there's two different styles here. The right rear is being what we call left stepped on and the right front tire is being swung on. So it's two styles of carrying. A swinging index is always gonna be a little bit faster than a left step index due to biomechanics on how you set up and using your hips to put the tire on the car. You'll see him just get his left hand placed on the tape for his hand placement and you'll start to see that right hand go set up close to six o'clock. That way he can start to move the tire on with his right leg. We call that more of a swing stout index. So he is swinging the tire on. And of course that tire carrier is left stepping the tire on. 
We always say a four tire pit stop is two stops within itself, the right side and the left side. Front changer does a really great job bracing himself on the fender to get up. He's always getting his hips angled at 45 degrees, coming around the nose of the car. Jack Person's dropping that car after he sees that all five lug nuts are tied on the right side. As soon as he's dropping that jack, he is chasing that front changer. We're always working in unison. So that front changer is taking three steps to get to the left side. That Jack Person is taking seven steps to get to the left side. Rear changer taking five steps to get to the left side. And then the tire carrier, they're trying to take minimal steps to get to that right rear tire that just got tire pulled. The tire carrier here does a great job of moving that 90 pound tire efficiently to the left side. He's also making sure that tire gets back to the wall. If tires don't get back to the wall, that's a tire penalty on the pit crew. But you also have to have a really great front changer getting up, already having that tire out of the way, getting his gun up, getting that hose cleared so he can get up and go. And here's a great angle of him getting that out of the way, taking his three steps, getting back down, getting that gun in the hub. Generally that time's generally about two seconds to 2.2 seconds from getting up and getting back down and starting their job again. So here's another example of what we don't want to have false steps. That tire carrier, every step he takes needs to always be in a forward direction. The pit crew, that's the story of their lives. Every step they take needs to be going towards the next objective of the pit stop. And if they're doing that, that Jap person can get faster from what we call peg to peg, dropping that car, running around the car like you see here, getting the plate under the left side peg and pegging it. That peg to peg on a good day is under three seconds and then getting the car up is well below four seconds. And if all things go good, changers already hit five off on the left rear, nothing happened on the front for the jack person to run around, he's able to get that tire onto the left side, generally about five and a quarter seconds to five flat, and that's pushing the boundaries of how fast you can really go. Here we have a great view of the Jatman placing that jack under the peg, pegging that efficiently, using a jack that will get these cars and trucks off the ground within one pump. Shop jacks you might have at your house might take three or four pumps to get the lift to max capacity. So when you have a hydraulic that can get the car off the ground with one, it's going to take a lot more force. So we're always teaching them how to use their hips to not only just peg the car, but to drive up the handle and to force all their weight through the back of that lever, using the maximum amount of weight they can to drive the car up in one solid stroke. We generally get the car up in one second or less because we have to go ahead and get the tires off efficiently sooner than later. One thing that makes a pit crew and a pit stop different than a lot of sports is most of these sports you're not carrying such heavy equipment and being timed with it. We're using what we call hinging where you're lifting weight, lowering weight with the hips. You don't see them rounding their low back to actually put the jack under the car or to put the tire on the car. We don't teach to be fast by timing that pit stop. We teach them to be fast by taking out extra steps. We always call it hip knee toe. So start pointing your hip where you're going to go, point your knee where you're going to go, and then get that big toe underneath you and drive out of the hole. The rear changer is going to the left, which is to the rear of the car. But to get up more efficiently, because we have to run around a little bit bigger of a dimension in the rear versus the front, we do this thing called a post step where that tire changer, as soon as he hits five lug nuts on and he's done, he'll go ahead and switch that button and get that right leg underneath him so he can drive out of the car there. That allows him to be super fast getting up and allows him to keep what we generally want to see is that 45 degree body lean where he's not standing straight up losing time vertically and he's not also just crouching around the car which would lose linear speed. So there's a really good angle of hitting those studs, hitting those lug nuts off in the front with his impact wrench and that socket's lining up. If they ever have to do a re-strike, it's generally because they've done something to affect the angle of the socket. It could be that they didn't have the camber in their wrist. They could have had their elbows dropping to push that gun high. They could have been rising up in their hips to push the gun down. You'll also see in the same shot that we did have a re-strike on the rear changer. Thought he had cleared that lug nut he had to go back in and hit it off again. And you'll see there's a big difference in time when you hit five off versus having to go back and re-strike that six lug nut. You'll also see there's pit support here, and these are the people that work behind the wall. They're just as important as the pit crew when it helps getting the pit stop to be more efficient. They do things like pull hoses, roll tires in, hand off second fuel cans. This is an angle where the pit support is actually rolling in the left rear tire. It's faster for that jack person to be able to come around to the left side of the car and already have that tire set up to the left rear so he can just grab it and start to index it. If that pit support is not there, then that jack person would have to peg pump the left side up, run back to the wall, grab the tire, and then get back into position and index it on the left side, which as you can tell would take a lot of time.
These tire carriers putting those tires on the, the hub really quickly with their left hand always being on the same spoke and then using their right thumb to steer that tire to the stud. You just don't grab the wheel and just throw it on anyway. They're lining up those five stud holes to the five studs that are on the hub. These changers are timed on how quickly they can do that. And on average, they're doing five lug nuts off or five lug nuts install within one second to 1.2 seconds. And if you time and look at the best indexes on pit road on Sunday, Saturday, and Friday, these tire carriers and jet persons are moving that tire from the ground and getting it lined up on the hub flush within a half a second. And we have those tapes on the tire to help us always have the same hand references. You want to hit 20 lug nuts every stop. Even if you have extras, that's fine. What you don't want to do is have 20 lug strikes and be perfect on your patterns, but then you have three, four, five loose lug nuts where you have a loose wheel. Same thing with the fueler putting fuel in the car. You can put that probe to a dry brake and engage it, but if that thing's not perfectly sealed, fuel's not going to get in the car. This is a good example of when a fueler is coming from the wall on their first can plugging in. And once they have that can in their hands, right hand wrapped around it, left hand supporting the neck of that probe, they take that left foot, right foot, left foot to engage the car. And then using those hips, keeping them at 45 degrees, using that left hip really to engage the probe to the dry brake of the car to make sure there's a flush seal of the can so fuel starts to flow. So the big thing we need to do before the race and during the race is we have to clean these wheels, get any kind of debris off the actual stud holes themselves, degrease them, and then what we do after that is we glue the lug nuts on, we use a weather strip adhesive that goes to the back of the lug nut, just enough to stick it to the steel itself of the wheel. And then we'll let those sit up for about an hour and a half to two hours on a good day. And then they're ready to actually put on a car or truck during a pit stop. So in this view, you'll see where the driver can also help the pit crew in a pit stop. We generally call him the sixth man on the pit crew. Them hitting their marks can really help speed the pit stop up. We'll have signboard out there so they can see their box coming in. They know to put that left headlight on the signboard to always hit that mark. That helps us a lot right off the get-go so we can then start to pre-plan where the car is going to be. Also, as they're coming in, making sure that not only they brake on that mark, but when they're braking to go ahead and get the wheel straight. We've been doing this for years where we put tape on the steering wheel which will be right at 12 o'clock so that way when the driver has the wheel straight that that allows the wheels the hubs to actually be straight which allows us to hit lug nuts off and to put tires on and off the fronts of the car because if that wheel is turned it's really tough to hit lugs and it's really hard to get the tire off. And another thing they do in all stops is you got to realize when they're coming in that they're generally going to be in second gear, maybe third gear, braking at stop, but they have to get back into first gear before they leave out of their pit box. While you're trying to hit a lug nut or trying to put a wheel in the car, the last thing you want to have happen is those studs move on you. So drivers know once they stop, keep the car in gear and once we drop the car on the right side they'll go ahead and shift while the car is on the ground to put it back in first gear as soon as they feel that car drop they know to get the car back out of the pit box that is their timer i'd like to show you a few tools that us pit crew people use to pit the car one of the heaviest pieces you'll see on pit road is the fuel can. You'll see that fuelers are normally larger in stature they're a little bit taller than normal one to line this probe up to the car itself. To line that up and get it flush, you need to generally be about six foot tall. The uh, can itself, when it's filled with fuel, can be on the upwards of 110 pounds. Here, like some teams do, we'll utilize water to mimic fueling. One, it's safer. Two, all of our cars will have reservoirs where the water will run into, so the water doesn't go into the fuel tank or go to the engine. One of the tools we use as changers is an impact wrench. Probably one of the tools that I think most people know the sound of. <laughs> A lot of people, when they learn how to do pit stops, this is what the position they at least want to learn how to try and do first. These are a little bit more efficient, a lot more faster than your standard shop tool. We're running generally upwards of 200 pounds of nitrogen to actually spin that socket. So that allows us to get these lug nuts off a little bit more efficient and quicker than standard shop guns. There's a coupling in that goes to the whip hose into the gun. This will always run to a nitrogen bottle. That nitrogen bottle puts nitrogen through this hose, through the whip hose, into the impact wrench. The nitrogen is what spins the internals of this gun and allows that socket to spin freely. We have to keep these internals always oiled up. Bare minimum, we always change oil at least every two stops. We put just enough oil in there to fill up the internals of that gun. You always check to make sure it free spins when you're spinning with your hand. Make sure you definitely 
have a clean snap on your button switches. It should have a nice firm click to it. So this is a linered tire, which means it has a bladder within the tire itself. So this is a 90 pound tire. We also run things called non-liners, where it's just the tire, there's no bladder inside. Those are generally about 55 to 60 pounds. So depending on what track we're at, we'll run different style tires and wheels. To become a Picture member, it takes a lot of heart, drive, and intensity. Teaching the fundamentals to anyone is not the hard part. It's getting an individual who wants it, who doesn't mind grinding day in, day out, repeating the same movements to fine tune those steps to get better each and every day. Sometimes only gaining 1% each time they practice. You don't want to race without a pit crew.